I don't think Kawhi looks very good. Here's what it looked like going to the bench for Kawhi Leonard and his head coach, Ty Lue. A little conversation there, Mark. That damn Kawhi Leonard has gotten off the hook long ago. But when we talk about a cat that is an absolute professional at missing games, Kawhi, nobody beats him. He, he the champion, he the five-time champion. Kawhi Leonard might be the five-time champion of missing games, according to Stephen A. Smith, but he's also a two-times finals MVP, and with the way he's been playing to start 2023, I promise you there is not a single player or team that wants to match up against a healthy Kawhi Leonard in the postseason. And you could almost say he took this personally. I was watching him in the building on Wednesday. He is not moving well, in my opinion. Since Brian Windhorst said Kawhi wasn't moving well, Kawhi has averaged 25, 6, and 4 on near 50, 40, 90 splits. And more importantly, the Clippers have won three games in a row with Kawhi and PG unsurprisingly featuring in all of those three games. And this is really going to shock you guys, but a big bulk of Kawhi's scoring has come from him being absolutely elite as a pull-up two-point shooter. I know, crazy, right? He's shooting over 50% on six pull-up twos a game, which is pretty much as good as it gets aside from, well, Kevin Durant being an alien, but it's no surprise Kawhi is still an assassin in the mid-range. Even if he's a little slower now, it doesn't have any effect because he's so good at finding the right angles and using his size and strength to create separation with such purposeful movement. Just look at his recent matchup against the Lakers. Everyone will talk about LeBron's 46 points, but Kawhi shot a casual 11 of 12 from two-point range. 92%. And Kawhi just makes it look way too easy. Here he is matched up against Pat Bev. Zubac slips the pick and Kawhi does a good job at utilizing the roll threat from Zu to keep Thomas Bryant honest. Meanwhile, he has Pat Bev on his back, shoves him out the way, and hits the pull-up. <laughs> Can we just for a second laugh at the fact Pat Bev was trying to get under Kawhi's skin and got zero acknowledgement, well, aside from the buckets that were getting put on his head. But getting back to his pull-up game, watch this play where he has Christie on him. He grabs the ball with one hand, keeps it in one hand going right before rising right above him. Can we just go back for a second? <laughs> Look at how Kawhi cups this ball. I know we see it all the time, but that right there defies physics and it allows him to use his off arm to create separation. These freakish hands and his freakish wingspan don't just allow him to cup the ball and shoot over people, but late in the game with the Lakers making a run, Kawhi re-entered and absolutely took the game away from the team in yellow. Initially it starts with Schroeder falling down before trying to get the ball to LeBron, Kawhi steals it, shrugs off Schroeder and hits the layup. Just a couple of possessions later, LeBron has Kawhi on him, and it's like everyone else, when Kawhi is in front of you, LeBron passes it off. But watch the swipe from Kawhi on Westbrook before running the floor and finishing the game. And although he doesn't have the same defensive motor or quickness he once did, at any given moment, he can still lock down the opposing team's best player. And I don't want to hear anything about LeBron scoring 46 points, because maybe four of those points or actually on Kawhi's head, but at any given moment, he can lock down an opposing team's star, and throughout games, his active hands in the passing lanes, and even around the rim, a huge deterrence. Just to prove how important he is defensively, with him on the floor, the Clippers are the second best defense in the league, as opposed to middle of the pack, and offensively, the gap has been even bigger, with him on the floor their top five, and their bottom of the league without him. But it's fine for me to say all of this and talk about Kawhi being back and how good he has been. How about hearing it from one of the best players in the league? Can I ask how, uh, how, how Kawhi looked to you after missing a whole year? He looks amazing. Um, yeah, and you know, I mentioned it last time we played. Last time we played them. Um, you can count him in to turn into Michael Jordan in the playoffs. The crazy thing is, when Embiid says you can count on Kawhi to turn into Michael Jordan in the playoffs, that's not exactly hyperbole. Since 2017, Kawhi has played 60 playoff games. In those games, he's averaging nearly 30 points 
and nine rebounds a game on close to 50, 40, 90 shooting, whilst, you know, being one of the best defenders in NBA history when he's locked in. And just to go a step further, he's only lost once in those four playoff runs. Granted, the injuries are a concern, but a healthy Kawhi Leonard has won eight of his last nine playoff series. But forget about the last five years. It was only two years ago when he absolutely dominated the Dallas Mavericks in the playoffs. And this series sticks out in particular because heading into the series, there were similar narratives flying around. He'd lost a step. He wasn't as good as he was in his prime. Luka Doncic was going to dominate that series. And Luka did dominate, but Kawhi put up a casual 32, 8, and 5 on 72% true shooting. But to go one step further, in the fourth quarter of the Mavs series, Kawhi shot 71% from the field whilst taking the responsibility of guarding Luka down the stretch of those games, and, well, he kind of clamped him on a lot of those possessions. I say all of this to remind everyone that Kawhi has always elevated his game in the playoffs. Let's not forget that. But getting back to what he's been doing recently, he's looking like a superstar again. I mentioned his pull-up shooting already, but amongst players averaging three or more isolations a game, He's currently 6th in the league, and these are the names ahead of him. One thing that has always made Kawhi such a special isolation player is his patience. Just watch this play. He has THJ faced up on the baseline, he hits a quick rip through, and with the help coming over, just watch the jump stop, and it's actually quite comical how the Mavs defenders are both helpless as they fly past watching Kawhi lay it softly in. He's also capable of just straight up bullying smaller defenders, like here where he backs White all the way down before hitting a soft hook shot inside. But outside of his dominant scoring, he often doesn't get enough credit for his passing. For starters, the ball is very safe in Kawhi's hands. Only once in his career has he averaged more than 2.1 turnovers a game, and that holds up in the playoffs as well. For reference, a guy like Kevin Durant is at about three and a half turnovers a game. But outside of being safe with the ball, he's just good at leveraging his scoring threat to create opportunities for others without trying to force things. Like on this play where he has a smaller defender on him, so the Nuggets sent help with Brown and Jordan. Kawhi does a great job at making a tough jump pass to Rocco around three defenders. Or again on this play, where he draws four Spurs defenders before making a smart pass out to Morris for three. Even in the Lakers game, his playmaking was good despite only recording three assists. His ability to collapse the defense resulted in multiple wide open looks and hockey assists for him. There's obviously reason to be skeptical about his injury history, but anytime we've seen Kawhi on the court in the regular season recently or in the playoffs, he is one of the most dominant players in basketball, along with the fact that in 99 games, Kawhi and PG have a win percentage of 71, makes the Clippers at the very least a threat. Anyways, if you made it all the way to the end of the video, a like would be greatly appreciated. Subscribe to the channel for more. Have a great day. Bye.